CD stands for continuous integration, uh, continuous deployment or continuous delivery. Okay. So this is the concept to automate our application deployments. Usually deployment is a uh, little complex uh, procedure. You need to take different things to deploy. So if you are doing that manually, sometimes the guy who is uh, doing that procedure may miss some steps. That yeah. Not proper. And sometimes uh, the, the application will work, but due to the misconfiguration, work not as expected, right? So yeah. if you if you automate this procedure in a more systematic manner, so the deployments are very stable and very fast, right? So that is the our idea of this concept. Okay. Mm. In our in our uh, projects, usually in real time, there is multiple environments, right? So we have the development environment. To develop the applications and you have a test environment to test mm -hmm. and to uh, assure the quality of application is good test of QA and we have the UAT environment and some people call this as a pre-production pre-prod and uh, production so this is some kind of standard structure followed in most of companies some mm -hmm. companies may have a staging environment, some companies may have only dev test and prod, no fast and hard rules like we should follow like this only. Okay. So it depends upon company, financials, company standards, they follow different kinds of environments, right? So when we have different kinds of environments, we need to deploy our application to different environments, right? Yeah. Deploy to development, deploy to QA, deploy to pre-production, and deploy to production. So, how how we what is our strategy to deploy our applications to different environments? How what need to, to follow that strategy? Okay, so the strategy mainly requires each environment. Uh, for each environment, we have a source code repository. Majorly, this is source code repository is very, very important. Most of companies use Git or Bitbucket as a source code repository. Mm -hmm. And where we actual our uh, sources resides, right? What we got our core resides. Mm -hmm. So in source code repository, we have different branches for different environment. For, develop, for development, we manage all the development uh, code in a branch called develop. Develop branch and all test environment, the release branch. And most of um, this production called the master master branch. Mm -hmm. There is a standard terminology used across the industry. All the companies use it. Master as a production branch. Master. So, so anybody and so each entity, each organization, each company, uh, they will have a Git repository, right? Yeah, Git repository. And all the staff, all the developers, and you know use those uh, you know they have access to like developers and master and all that and uh is that correct developers uh have limited access to repository i they don't have access to the master repository okay. most people they have the access to develop repository sorry develop branch okay so all the all the developers can can deposit or a risk or you know store and you know they can use that and get to reposit right whatever the project they're working on yeah yeah 
All right. And anybody in that group has, you know, will need a, need to have access. And uh, development team mostly have access to uh, develop branch, and uh, some people have the access to release branch, but usually won't get access to the production branch. Sorry, master okay. branch. So this okay. uh, has uh, admin only the kind of DevOps team they have access to master branch. Mm. So they will manage this master branch here, you know, merging all the stuff, right? So develop anything what we need to do is we need to branch we need to make our own branch from the develop branch right this is you you, you want to develop some small some small uh, you know, projects yeah application or whatever you need to yeah. already the code is there you want to do some kind of enhancement you need to branch the develop branch um with some some atom code something like that mm. and you develop that application and once you finish your task, mm -hmm. do one thing right, do one thing, you create a pull request. Something called pull request. Okay. Pull request means you are saying uh, the people, I am done one I'm done with my task. Yeah. You use this uh, this code, if it is fine, you can merge this code to develop branch. Okay. To create a pull request, you need to give the uh, reviewer name. You who want to review your code, okay? Okay. Yeah, cool. Probably the application architect or some some guys, the peer reviewer, you know, certain you know, tech lead. He will review the code. Mm -hmm. finds, okay, this code is up to mark and everything is good. Then you can merge this your code to the actual developer branch. So that person knows MuleSoft. Well, um, yes, that should be because you, you, if you develop the code in the Microsoft, that person should know the Microsoft. What standard okay. or how you develop? If you if you have any question, you can come back to you and ask the question, like okay, and something like that. So yeah. sometimes developer have access to uh, development directly, where they can push the changes to the develop branch. That depends upon company to company how they follow that. You know, yeah. Right. right, so it is one of the most important part where we decide all our uh, you know sources, right? Yeah. So when you want to deploy to the develop a uh, development environment, we need to take the course code from the develop and we need to develop to the deploy to the develop environment. So I I just mentioned the we have the four environments, right? So. We have develop environment, test environment, pre -part and production, right? So, mm -hmm. from the branches, from, from the national branch that take, take the code, it will depend on the production environment. Always master branch. Master branch is the final branch where we manage always the consistent stable code. So, it will go to the production environment. Release branch, it will go to the test environment. And mm -hmm. develop branch within development environment. So, when a code commit happens to the develop branch, somebody commits a code. Somebody, you know, if Adam created a code and Adam uh, sent a code request, so he's reviewer something called John. John approves the Adam code and John merges the code to the develop branch. Mm -hmm. So, once the code comes to develop branch, what our strategy is, and automatically a process needs to run and try to deploy this code to the development environment in our runtime. Okay. So, uh, how this process happens? So, for that, you need to have idea of the Git. Uh, that is the first process, how to, what is the Git commits, Git uh, um, push, Git pull, Git pull, pull request. That is the first step. First step, you need to hide up the kit because the source is uh, the source of our source code is a repository from where we are getting the code, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the one. Um, the second thing is the most important thing is you need to understand about 
today my my goal is about this thing i will explain this thing okay and uh, next is uh, i i i given some code some uh, article to install jenkins right hope you will install right okay. you know i think i'm um i play with jenkins one uh, way back and i'm i'm thinking my i might already have it in my system no problem no problem keep it so we'll we'll connect all the dots in the in this weekend session right now i yeah. I'm explaining about dots okay we connect all the dots the okay not to need to learn about about the git it is first dot okay so you need to know about um, git commands some little <laughs> like uh, how to commit the code to git what is the local repository what is the remote repository mm. remote repo local repo git is some kind of distributed uh, source code management so every developer has its own repository and there is one central repository where all the developers code resides okay Mm. So I have understanding of local repo, central repo. If you don't have this concept, there are numerous articles and numerous videos available on the internet. Please go through that thing and try to you know do some git practice. Some do do any small example the project. Not it should not be in the use of any, any any kind of simple source and try to commit the code and try to push the code to the remote repository. Okay, simple mm. practice on the git, right? and second thing you need to know how to create environments in ulsoft okay. how to create environments in ulsoft and here you need to create the branches how to create branches on sim create a branch create a branch in git you need to have some idea on what is a branch and how to create a branch and how to merge the branch only that what that is an idea you need okay right adam yeah so this part please you take care if you have any questions i will happy to help you and explain you that i can't explain from the start point of the game so okay. you take care of it and uh, if you have any queries i can help you on the process okay and okay. Today, i like to start with the use of the area that is how to create environments in use of runtime okay so this is the second step because if you know the environment how to get an environment then you can able to push environment right right so this is what and third concept is you need to have an idea of api gateway what is the api gateway concept you call it api gateway okay i see okay and uh, the fourth concept you need to have um how to how to configure environments in mule application so when are you saying like environment environment are you talking about inside the git or you talking about the the mule soft mule soft inside the git you need to create different branches for for develop you need to develop create a develop branch okay, just you know you to know how to create a branch in mule in the git that is different so that is not related to mule soft in this branch you can you can store dotnet code python code any kind of code you can store in the git right okay so in the git end you need to know how to create a branch yeah so we created a separate branch for each environment cool so in in like for companies they have they only have a dev branch right yeah. so you they only going to give you the path right yeah 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 exactly exactly you're not yeah. going to create unless you know if it's already there you use it if it's not you will create yeah, you need to create a branches in the git okay for for each uh, you know um by default you create a repository you it come with the master branch in the git okay yeah. so you need to create other branches like develop branch test branch you need to create in the in the git okay. so 
So just to explore about the how to create a branch in Git, it's a generic topic, uh, and of course you get idea about the Git branches. And the second step is how to create views of the environment that I will going to create the views of. It's very simple in create views of environment in different platform. And API gateway is a little uh, important topic. And I will tell you how to create an API gateway. What is an API gateway? That is the topic. And third thing is how to configure environment in MuleSoft application. So you get doubt what is second step and what is fourth step. Right? Second step is creating an environment in MuleSoft platform, any one platform. So this is the platform where we are going to deploy our application, right? There is a development environment, environment, test environment, and production environment. Maybe I, I say there are three environments. Okay, we can we can deploy application to development, to test, or to the production. So how to create this box inside the mules of infant platform where we can deploy our, our applications. So here, how to configure environments in the means of application. So this is a part when you creating an application, you need to uh, tell in the application that, okay, development environment lies at this point. Test mm -hmm. environment will configure at this. And production configure. If you, if you provide these details in the application, when you're deploying a, this application, right? First, we need to view what uh, you know, what environment we're going to deploy. So, this part has the, all the details of the where the development environment, environment, and uh, what is username and password to connect to that environment is all the details. So, the application will get deployed to the development environment. Right? So, this okay. is a where we create the environments, and this is a where we configure the environment inside the application. Mm. So then the, part, the fifth thing is you need to configure something called uh, automating the tool that is called Jenkins. Jenkins is a guy where we're writing all the steps, how to, how to fetch the resources from the uh, Git and where to deploy all the steps we can do. We can write in Jenkins, right? So this way where we write the pipe something called pipeline i can show you uh, how to uh, write a pipeline how to automate that okay so long way and today we create a simple uh, use of environment and little thing about the api gateway that's the concept i want to focus today right? okay right how to create an environment in the mule so we use of everything is in the any platform so let me open the Nippon platform. So what is the URL to open any point platform? Any point dot mm -hmm. okay. So when you log into this any point dot you will create an account and you can log in. You can see the dashboard of uh, this any point platform. Right? So in the dashboard, something called big box. This is management center. This is the um, segment where you can manage your any point platform. So in the management center, there is one button, this access management, mm. right? It's access management. You can see the different parts in the access management. You can create a new users. You can create a new roles. You can create an environment. You can uh, configure the authentication providers, client providers, log, so several things are there. Okay. So today our goal is you need to create the new environments. For that, you have to go for the environments. You go for environments by default. You can see, uh, see actually by default if you open your thing, right? You can see only two environments: design and sandbox. But as part of my you know applications, I created two more environments. Like mm -hmm. If you want to create a new environment, add environment button is there. Add add environment. And um, what kind of environment is this? Production, sandbox, and design. So for us, we can't create the production environment because our uh, account is a free account. To create the production environment, you need to have the official use of license with you. Okay. 
So as we don't have that license, we need to create a sandbox environment. And we can give the name as production. That's that different story. Just give the name as production. Just it's the only name. Okay. You can yeah. Give it it's a label. It's a just label. Maybe the prod simple comes from prod create. So the prod is one prod create. So likewise, simple thing. Go to access management and add environments and add the environment. If you open that environment, I just take it a prod environment. If you open the prod environment by clicking this link, and you can see the client ID and client secret. Okay. So this is the unique credentials for this environment. Mm -hmm. These things you require. If you want to deploy anything to the production uh, production environment, you need to use this client ID and client secret in your automatic process. So that will be able to connect and able to deploy. Right. Got it, Adam? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so this is required. So likewise, you want to deploy to dev environment, you need to give the dev credentials. How to connect to dev environment? That's right. Time ticket of the dev environment. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental is for each environment you created, there is a credentials got created automatically. You need to provide those credentials if you want to deploy application to that environment. That is the fundamental. So, so the first step is done. It's very simple. Um, very simple. Create environment by doing environment name. Okay. Okay. So next step is you need to learn about API gateway. So what is API gateway? Okay, this is little interesting, little important concept. Yeah. So when you when we're developing your applications, right? But suppose you're developing some application. So when your client uh, provided the application requirements, there are two kinds of requirements usually. One is called functional requirements. Functional requirements and uh, second is non functional requirement. So, anytime you heard about these things, Adam, functional requirement, non functional requirements, functional and uh, function, yeah. So, I think I might understand this. So, functional requirement is that the you know, the mandatory feature is that. The application should have right and fantastic this mandatory business requirement yeah mandatory business requirement so this is satisfied the core area of the customer requirement is satisfied this is if you want to develop some kind of calculator if you pass the two numbers, you need to return the sum of the two numbers. If you you know do that coding, that is called function requirement, right? So then what are non-function requirements? Yeah, so it's opposite of that, right? There are some features. Yeah. And my my application has exactly, but it, but it's not um it's good to have it, but it's not required. You know what they call that? It's maybe talking about the performance. Yeah. So if you do the two numbers and you mean the returns, return, the, the result is the rating after, after 10 minutes, there's no use, right? Mm. You expect the result in within fraction of seconds, right? So that expectation, because performance is one of the non functional requirement and security. Yeah. So, and proper logging means uh, if your application fails, we need to troubleshoot and we need to know the reason immediately. If you do the proper logging, you go to the log file, you can find out the reason immediately. If you don't do proper logging, you have no clue about that error, right? So, it's very tough to uh, identify the error. So, performance, security, logging, transaction management. 
these are all comes under non functional requirement right Quality. so so in this in this case yeah we use in uh, this term is like a functional requirement and non functional requirement to right. so to separate what application does versus yeah. what other things the application might need to function. Right. So when you develop an application, we need to focus majorly on function requirement and we yeah. need address non-function requirement also. We, we're not saying that, okay, non-function requirement is not my, my responsibility, I won't focus, no, no. Your client won't satisfy if you won't, if you, you need to satisfy both, right? Okay. So the both they are both important. Exactly, both important. Mm -hmm. Then how can if you do one thing, um, if you separate the functional requirement and non-functional requirement, means if you ask your developers to focus only, you know, uh, some kind of functional requirements. And you separate all the non function requirement. Mm. Okay, all these things for our security, all the stuff. And you can add this uh, non function requirement to your code if you want to remove that. This is called a kind of policy. In use of terminology, it's called policy. Okay, so policy is a non function requirement. Those uh, I can add to this this code. Okay, I can remove this form of requirement. They have some kind of flexibility, right? So I can put this all non requirement in a place that is called API gateway. Okay. So how we are managing this this kind of uh, infrastructure in Mule? So in Mule, what happens is when you create an API. So where do you create an API? In Mule software, there are two, you can say two planes. One plane we call as a control plane. And second plane we have a runtime plane. So runtime plane with the all mule server, maybe it may be cloud hub, it may be standalone. Okay. So where actually your mule application is running, where you deploy the mule application that is taking your system with server resources running. This is called server actually, right? Yeah. It may be running in the cloud or running on the your own own private cloud or running on the standalone or running on the Kubernetes cluster, whatever. Where you your application is running and taking the memory and CPU resources, that is called the runtime plane. Okay. So control plane usually is a cloud app uh, where we control this application. Control plane is a place from where we control application. We, we need to deploy application, we need to undeploy application, we need to add the policies, we can remove the policies, whatever thing we can do. We're managing this application from a place called control plane. Mm. Runtime plane is a place where actually the application is running. We're taking the resource of the CPU memory, all the stuff, and is running. That's our runtime plane. Okay. Yeah. Usoft is uh, divided. Two parts for so control plane and runtime plane. So in the control plane, we have a design center where we develop an application, where we design an API. Uh -huh. okay. so after designing what we what to do, we will um, publish that API to exchange. I 
I shown you right, Adam, how to publish the event to exchange from, from the design center. Event exchange. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We yeah. Did. When you when you publish an API to mm. the design center, uh, sorry, when you publish an API from design center to exchange, there is one unique ID created for this API that is called API ID. Mm -hmm. For each API you publish to the exchange, there is some unique ID got created. Okay. So to manage this API, there is one more section called API manager. Yeah. API manager is a place where you manage API. So if you create an instance of this API in API manager, we can see this API instance ID. What ID for that country? It's a unique ID. Okay. So what we need to do is when you create an uh, when you create an API, that API has one unique instance ID. So the application actual running in, in the runtime manager in the in the in the in the runtime plane. Okay. The application actually running in runtime plane. Runtime plane, what I can do is uh, I can um, the application has two requirements. One is the functional. Take the application. So take the application, right? So it has the application you need to talk to your control plane. Right? So for that, I shown you one time, I think you remember that is something called agent. Agent, right? Agent, runtime agent. Yeah. Okay. So agent is the component that is talking to your control plane. Yeah. When you want to deploy or undeploy, you just send an agent, the agent will take care of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have agent, we have the functional code, actual code, functional code in the, in the application. And um, here the fundamental is, so you develop an application. For this API, but this is customer API example. Mm. Customer API, and in the any point uh, studio, you develop the customer API MPL and deploy that customer API MPL to the runtime. Runtime, sorry, here in, in the cloud of example. Okay, mm. the customer API. Implementation code, right? And uh, if you want to apply any uh, any policy to this application, or if you want to remove any policy extra, you have any, any if you want to add a new caching kind of policy or security policy, any policy, mm -hmm. you need to communicate with this ID because your API manager is digital ID, right? Okay, if you put this ID inside your application, then what happens is if you put this API manager can able to add this policies to your application. Mm -hmm. 
table is communicate with using this unique ID. If you, uh, you need to add this unique ID to, to this application. Okay, this is the uh, channel or bridge. Your API manager is able to uh, you know add policies or remove policies to the application running in the runtime manager. Right. So this ID we call as a API auto discovery. Auto discovery ID. Mm -hmm. Why this API auto discovery ID required is it forms a bridge between your API manager and the application running in the runtime plane and the cloud. Okay. So what we do is while deploying this application to the cloud, you add this ID inside this application and you deploy this application to the cloud. Before deploying itself, you take the ID from the runtime manager, API manager and add that ID to your application and deploy application to the cloud. So it sees, right? If its ID matches, then it will manage this application. It can able to add the policies, so it can remove the policies and what it can do it can does. This is the you know ID is a bridge. Okay, so let me quickly implement this. I can show you so that you can able to understand uh, what I can do is I can simply create a simple API. Go to the design center. application I am developing something about the student with API. Hmm. Simply creating one simple resource called students Simple and credible simple API. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and I want to publish this API to the exchange. So, would publish and publish the exchange. Version that is so one point zero point zero and exchange okay. once you publish the exchange. Going to API manager. Mm -hmm. So I want to manage this API. So for that, I need to register this API over here. Then only I can able to manage. Okay. So API manager add API and add new API. And from the mule gateway, mule flux gateway is very new new concept. Okay, we'll discuss later. Yeah. Yeah. This is a mule gateway. A mule API gateway embedded in the mule runtime. I told right, mule runtime the gateway is embedded. So, gateway embedded in mule runtime can directly to existing mule application, right? So, mule gateway, and uh, I'll, I'll discuss this proxy also a little after this one uh, to add to the existing application basic endpoint. 
recommended the next which which ap you want to i want to consist to make students is ap this one right so select he already he already knows it yeah. right. next you want to do anything like you can do label or everything is optional you can go for it okay and then, It's optional. <coughs> so, once you configured, once you registered, right? When the API ID is created, this is called API instance ID. This is called mm. for ID. Okay. So, I'm come back to my AnyPoint uh, Studio. I want to create an application. Okay. Soft project. of the project and the project name is uh, student API PL. And I want to create are you importing yeah I'm importing that one okay go to my uh, design center students is API hmm. So if you see the uh, design center, right, for here, yeah. status is unregistered. Yeah. And this means it's not running actually. If you see, uh, it is called unregistered. Nothing is running, right? Mm -hmm. Status to say, okay, this one state is unregistered. So let me see a walk deployment to the runtime. Okay, one finish. <clears throat> my simple project coordinator my goal is not about the project my goal is about the auto discovery and api gateway concept okay, okay. what i am doing is i want to deploy this to the cloud hub um before that i want to deploy to cloud hub how the api manager know this is application running in the cloud. Okay. So for that, I need to add some auto discovery ID also. Go to your global configuration. Mm -hmm. okay. And the global configuration. Configuration. Mm -hmm. For in the filter, uh, for API after discovery, okay, so I need to do the API ID. The API ID, yeah, yeah, we get that from, uh, yeah, so this is one API instance side. Copy this one and the main flow. So, this main flow is there somewhere, you can see the main flow. Main flow. David. Now I want to apply this to the product. So right click over here. Product. There's so many components, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, uh, my trial got ended. I need to create a new account. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of costs, yeah. no account. Uh, I need to configure again all the APIs. 
So you know, yeah, it's to uh, create a new account in the next class, man. It takes uh, another fifteen minutes to me to get on this stuff again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, I hope you know. Hopefully, when we have, uh, you know, we'll go through this. Might be another time when we have a real case, but uh, um, this is really you know what what I'm. I don't know what I'm finding out, my friend. Is that not only you need to be good at MuleSoft, but also you have to also know all this other stuff that you know, you like to deploy it in a different environment, and there's so many other components that are in the play. Yeah, yeah. If you practice the two or three, um, you know, three applications for deploying different environments, then you yeah. Can then it's easy, right? It's, yeah. It becomes easy. <laughs> so, so talk to me, and I have a question. And uh, way back, we discussed it, and I heard also, I read somewhere else, mm -hmm. that I read somewhere else, and I think you mentioned as well, way at the beginning, mm -hmm. that that the, the nice thing about the mule is that um, it has a way that, you know, for example, like a different, I don't know, they call it, I don't know, they, it's a different level of um, connectivity, right? It's so they, they say application connectivity, platform and connectivity, experience connectivity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are talking about API led connectivity. Yeah. Um, this, uh, uh, system layer, process layer, right. experience layer. Yeah. 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 So what are we talking about in that situation? Like when we get, when we're doing get and post, are we saying that I don't know? That is a different a complete architectural concept. That is one level above what we are doing now. So you need to develop different kinds of APIs. Um, yeah. Made by the process API, a system API, and uh, experience API. So whatever APIs you are developing. So that has to uh, deploy in your runtime, right? In your production server, right? Yeah, yeah. So you want to deploy uh, it, what level it follows. Maybe, see, if you have a system API, the system API has a development uh, development environment. It's the same system API you go to production, sorry, some test and production. So all these API connectivity layers has uh, presence in development, test, and production. Okay, so yeah, um, so say that when we're connecting to a database, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing data, database connectivity. Yeah, at that level, we're doing system yeah. API. Yeah, database file system, uh, MQs, and uh, this this is what is all you define system layer system. And okay. In the process layer, you may connect to different uh, system layers. You get data from different system layers, and you can, uh, them, you can, uh, you can, you know, uh, merge them and you build them one big uh, payload, right? So that's the process layer. And what is the experience then? Experience layer is but specific to clients. Some clients want uh, only XML. I want XML. And some client requesting, I want only JSON. Some client uh, just I uh, send me the file. Uh, you know, to serve that specific client, we will mm. we'll do um, we'll encode how to send that uh, in, interact to that that specific client. That kind of APIs we develop experience API. Mm. Some are mobile clients, some are web clients. Inside the web, some people are uh, you know have different media type. Yeah. So based on the customer. Uh, end client, so we develop the experience APIs. Mm. 